to create a pattern we'll be using this um half scale bodice block that's a brace bodice block and um so the first thing i'm going to do is to get the waist reduction so for this pattern the waist reduction is um two points two cm from the waist i'll measure two cm now this is the under bust so um for the under bust i'm going to measure three cm because we're going to have a dart i'm not using the full under bust but for the purpose of making it more um fitted around the under bust line and because of the kind of fabric i'm working with too so most times i like to take in the under bust depending on what i'm working with a bit so note this is not a full under bust measurement for this measurement the under bust is um, about 6 cm so i just took in three here then connected it to the waist reduction now it's going to have a band so this is the under bust so this is where the waist is this is going out this is going out i'm just going to connect this with this marker now the next thing i'm going to do is to take um the for the under bust the band i'll come up so this is the under bust that's where the band is going to start from i'll come up by 1.5 cm because i want it a bit curvy at the i want the band a bit curvy at this part so i'm just going to connect to the under bust don't make it don't touch the exact under bust if not it will affect your under bust measurement so this is it now if you want a band at the back you just connect this to this point that way you cut the band at the back so after getting this i'm going to cut out the band so that i can tighten the shoulder shoulder and create the neckline so come here band I'm going to indicate I'll decide to add him um, I just cut it out since I don't have allowance at the front so this is the seal so this is the upper part of the band and this is the down part of the band for the waist just going to leave it like that. I'll stick it out on my pattern and my fabric. Now, to concentrate on the neckline, for the shoulder tightening, I'll be using 50% shoulder tightening. And this is um, 50% 0.5 times um, 8. You give me 4, if I'm not mistaken, 4. So 0 0.5 times 8, 4 cm. That's to be honest on just to be sure i'll just do the calculation 0 0.5 50 percent times um eight that's the that four so i'll come here I'll come here i'll take out my four from here to here i'll measure four cm And I'm going to mark the dotted line. So this is our new dart. I'm going to take this to this dart leg. So please note when you're taking it, make sure this part is you take it and it's you're taking it. Don't concentrate on taking it like this. If not, it affects this part when you want to slash through this part. 
the ticket like this. Okay, use your tape. Make sure it's done. And you take this part. Right. Take this part. Now, after doing that, you now redraw your neckline. But before you uh, your shoulder line, before you redraw your shoulder line, you're going to come to this point, the shoulder point. You measure your four, four in four cm that you use as on um, your shoulder tightening. You take you add it back because it needs to be added back. They set you making it sleeveless. You wouldn't need that, but if you're making something that has sleeve, you need to add back that measurement so that you can have your shoulder line complete. So from here, we we'll connect to the new SP, which is the shoulder point. Connect to the new SP. So this is it. Please ignore this. Then from here, you connect to your new arm hole. I'm going to take this marker and create this dotted line. That will be my new armhole. Connect it to this. So this is my new armhole. The next thing I'm going to do is to get my neckline. So for the square neckline, you have to figure out how low you want it. Or how high you want it. So I'll just take this and put here to enable me to create the neckline. Now, what I usually do when I want to create this neckline, I use I roll this I guess it serves as a guideline for me to be able to get the measurement. Now from here depends on how wide you want the shoulder seam to be. I want my own shoulder seam to be two inches. So this is two inches. So from this new new point, you figure out how wide you want it. Oh, two point two one quarter of an inch. I'll just do two inches. Two inches is fine. I don't want it too wide. I want it a bit. I want it a bit smaller. So this is my two two inches. So when you come here, you measure because this will serve as a guideline for the back neckline. So what I have here is three point one. You can still go to the back and just register that on the back neckline. So three point one. I'll just leave it. I'll come back to that. Now, to get a square, square neckline, I'll come to the nape of the neckline, which is this part, and figure out how low I want it. I'll be using four inches. So this is where my four inches falls. Then from here, let me make this clearer. So this is where the, from here you figure out how, what's the measurement of this is. So from here to this point, this line that I root on the neck, on the CF, around the neckline, the measurement I have here is um, 5.5 three quarter plus 1, so it's not to see the last line before 6. So I'm just going to take that measurement and take it down to till I get to this point where I want the neck line to stop so put it here i'll put it here so this is where the neckline is stopping i'll put it here then i'm going to take my ruler i'll connect from here to this point Don't want it as wide as this you can go ahead and reduce it depends on what you want 
can go ahead and use it or you can go ahead and create another square line this kind of square line like this i have a video on my channel you can go through it and check it out so this is it so i create this you can also go ahead and reduce it i don't want it too wide like i said but you must if you're looking for that neckline you must follow the guideline so that you have that whole measurement reduce the the length of the color so this is it the next thing i'm going to do so let me make this more So the dotted line is now my new neckline. So this is your armhole. This is how wide this place is going to be. So this is your neckline. This is how wide it is. So if you don't want it as wide as this, please reduce it. Increase it rather. So this is it. The nice thing I'm going to do is to cut this out. this up like this If you want um, the square neckline at the back, you go ahead and create the square line, square line at the back. But I don't want a square line at the back, so I'm just going to connect this. So you take your curve. So this is the neckline for the back. Creates my seam allowance instead of wasting this. To get the that um get out um on the bust line, so this is the point. This is the that leg. I'm going to slash to the bot the, the bust line instead of the bust point that I slashed before. So I just slash to this bust point.
direction this is it so you need to this flare is not this opening is not going to give us enough gathering on that day so what i'll do now if i slash to the um to the neck point it will increase the width of the neckline it will increase this width we have 5.1 hair 5.1 hair minus the seam allowance even though i've decided to to use this like i said before um this was supposed to be my seam allowance this was supposed to be my seam allowance but looking at it i really don't want it that open anymore so i'll add seam allowance to this so at the end of the day i'll be having two point i'll be having three inches as the width of the neckline i will correct the back also I'll correct the back I'll correct the back I'll look for the this is the so I've gone ahead to slash this um that leg here so I slashed it to this bust line now this is the opening that we have now if we need to slash this open by holding this it will affect the the width of the neckline now before i even continue uh, i've decided i need to i'm um, going to be using this neckline including the seam allowance so what i'll do i'll just add another half an inch for sewing allowance do the same thing to the back add half an inch that way i'll arrive at this so that being said i'll go back to what i was saying now if this is um if we if we slash this to the this point to this point it will increase this neck point it will make it wider since it's not to the shoulder so i need to figure out how i can create this so that it will give me i can have more opening so that i can spread so i'll slash slash it so you can come here and measure 3 cm this three inches come here i have 3.1 3.2 inches so i can slash so i have to slash let's see i want to experiment because slashing through the point has increased the width of the neckline i will slash it on so what i did was to slash it to this um chest line so this chest line i also went ahead to open this the main dart then this so we just spread it because the more we slash to this point we we increase so slash and try to expand open this it will increase the width of the chest point which also affects this measurement so we just all i'm doing is to just creating slash it to the point where it's possible for me to create a bit of more of the gathers around the under bust so i'll just spread it at the end of the day this is giving me um two and a half the main that is giving me two and a half so when i'm spreading this i'm just going to make sure that this part is balanced it's balanced when i place it on my pattern i'll have at least maybe 0 0.5 cm or half an inch that will also contribute to the gathers so that is what i'm going to do because i have slashed it and it affected the width of the neckline so that is the front the next thing is to cut this pattern then before i do that i'm going to come to this neckline that is sharp i'm going to go down on the neckline i'm going to go down by 0 0.25 inch that's um one quarter then i'll connect it to the shoulder 
So this is it basically. You just take you use that sharp edge. You don't cut your shoulder, you just reduce the sharp edge. So this is it. So the pattern itself is ready. Pattern is ready. So this is the back, this is the front. For the flare, um, I'll be using I folded it into to the bias form. Bias form for um for the radius. I marked 12, 12 inches to get the radius. This also includes the zip allowance. I'm cutting the back first. So the length of this dress is um forty four. So I've marked it. The next thing is to cut, cut this, and um, cut the front also. I've cut the back and front of the flare. So this is it. At the center front, I added three quarter of an inch because there's going to be an opening here. So the opening will stop here. So I'll just um, cut this place open. So after cutting this, um, I'll notch this part and notch this part. Then here, I'll notch here because this is where I'm going to do together. Get So get it, so I'll have a neckline like this. I'm going to cut um the facing of this or I'm going to cut two. I don't know if I want to cut this facing or I'll just cut one of it. I'll decide when I'm done cutting the band. But if you, if you want to cut if you don't if you know you don't want to cut um two of these, you can go ahead and cut your facing. So I'll decide. For the back facing, just place the fabric on the, um, the the back on the on the fabric, and I point ahead to do this. And from here to here, I measure three three inches, three inches. Mark it so. For the band, how to cut two of this. This dot will be taken out from this side when I join the fabric, join it together. So this is the band. For the facing, this is the neckline. So what I did was to just place this and get the neckline. Then from there I marked the inches that I have and need. Make sure it's the same with that of the back. So this is the back facing. Make sure at the end of the day you have the same width of shoulder shoulder measurements. So this is it. So marked measurement then. Go to this part because there's going to be an opening on this side. That's why this is like this. So I'll just go ahead and trim this out. Head to overlock the the skirt side of the of the dress. I'm also join the center back. 
overlocked it. Now, the next thing, because this, this dress is going to have a drawstring at the center front, so what I did was to get to the center of this dress, then we, I got the, the bust, um, the nipple to nipple measurements of the upper part. So that's what I used here as the side, the side seam where, I, that's what I used on the side, on the side seam. So this is where the measurement, so I placed it here. This is a, a strap or a, a drawstring, a drawstring a measurement of a, one, one inch. Uh, one one quarter so i divided it into two this is one one quarter divided it into two here and then we have this line here so what i'm going to do depending on how you want this drawstring to look like that will determine the length that you use it but i'll be using this length i'll be using length 13 13 inches so by the time i sew in half it will be it will have top and half so what I did was to cut this, cut this about two, two, one quarter inches. Then I folded it in. Then I cut the center of this. That's it basically. Then this part you fold it in because you need to have it neatly finished at this end. So what I'm going to do, and after placing it, getting this, you have to roll a straight line on this path. Then you place. After getting this, I'm going to sew on this line, this center line here. Stitch it down. Then I'm going to stitch this side too down. Then stitch this side. So that's it basically. Then I'll put in the my safety pin past the rope or past the rope so the rope is going to be longer so let's assume this is the rope I'm going to pass the rope like this after fix closing it then the rope is going to be longer here then I'll stitch this place so at the end of the day, I'll end up drawing this place. By the time I draw the rope, it will give me this effect. So that's what I'm saying. So I'll go and stitch this down. So this is what I was trying to explain. The, I'm going to have to stitch this like this. On this center. Then you take your safety pin, you pass the thread. So you have this. Then after that, you stitch this together. You pass your thread. You pass not the thread this the the strap you pass it with your safety pin put it like this and bring it out here so this is after that you stitch the next thing is to go close the take the back and sew the side seam then after sewing the side seam in order to fix the pocket you're going to measure two and a half two and a half inches on both sides so measure two and a half from here to here you measure two and a half from that two and a half you measure seven inches that's the space of the pocket you do the same thing to this side two and a half seven inches that's the allowance for the pocket so you stitch to this part you stitch two and a half to this part then you leave the opening you continue then after that, we'll face the pocket. This is the upper part of the dress. Um, Fun ahead to put stay on the back. We've joined. Okay, we've not joined the back. All we did was to overlock. So now we're going to fix this um, stay. This um, face into it. So for the front, this is it. All you do is to just run loose stitches on the side that needs to be gathered, then you gather it. So, go ahead to gather it. 
this is what it looks like then the center front where we have this um joining there's going to be an opening there on uh, the opening depending on how deep you want or how low you want it so i don't want i don't want the cleavage or the bust to show i'll be using 3.3 inches so at the end of the day we'll have um after joining this we'll have 2.5 so this is it here i'm just going to cut through this like this the center the seam allowance so this is the opening here so this is the opening you go ahead and top stitch this to make it tight around that area so the next thing you're going to do, if you want this lower, you go ahead and do that. Go ahead and make it lower, depending if it's not showing your cleavage. The whole idea is for me to have a rope around the side. So you take your facing, so this is the facing, you're going to set it also. Going to set it this is the center so for the center you're going to get the center first of all instead of doing this get the center and you slash it open the same amount of um, opening you have for the the bodies so you just take it and you pin i didn't put face and um, stay on this because i want it to be i don't want it to be thick around the side so you need to place this like this so we still need to open this now so after pinning after slashing the center open the next thing you're going to do like i said before is to take this and pin but before you pin that you're going to get this um strap you place it like this you make sure it's below half inch because you're going to sew half so you make sure it's below the half inch place it you pin it down just pin everything down. To pin it down. We're going to sew like this. Sew like this. We'll do the same thing to this one. Take your pin it down. You sew half an inch. So you go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and so half an inch. After that is done, the nice thing you're going to do is to take your band, take your band, and you get the center of the band, get the center of the back of the top. Take it like this, you sew half an inch, you sew half an inch. Now we're going to take the facing of the band and sew half an inch also, that way we'll turn it. So we're going to do the first one and we'll bring it back, continue. The band has been fixed. Um, this is it. Also, fix the facing. 
so you can either do it this way by taking this band and this one but facing on the main band and you stitch it together or you can do it one one so this is the band this is what it looks like now this has also been faced um this has also been faced the strap now for the facing i noticed that um it's really wide so i have to trim it i think i used them um, three inches earlier on here so I have to trim it because it's going to affect this is two and um, three inches after sewing in half we have two and a half so I'll trim it I'm gonna have to trim one side I'll just reduce it by so we have um, two inches at the end of the day so that we'll have enough space for our armhole it doesn't overlap on our on our sleeve when we when we try to hem it down or use a, a hemming gum I'm going to try to yes hem it down or use the hemming gum to finish the face it so that it's, it's important to reduce that and when you reduce this you also reduce that of the back also since we have this as the measurement so we're going to reduce the back also by at the end of the we'll have two and a half so half inch or so in two inches for the remaining allowance so I need to trim this off I just mark two inches then I'll trim it off now the excess we have here on the band like I said I was going to remove it when I join this so all you have to do is to just position this properly then you trim out the excess but before that you make sure you stitch this down you stitch this down before you trim it so after that you just trim it out then after that the next thing is to take the back of the face of the of the, of the dress you attach your face into it so we we'll look for the back of the dress now where's the back of the dress we're going to attach our face into it so i'll go ahead and trim this off we'll overlock it again Take this. You saw half an inch. You saw half an inch. Then you top stitch. For the front of the dress, I want it. Um, I don't want it round. I want it a bit slanted and um, curvy on one side. So this is the front of the dress i'm gonna head to open it by the side on both side so the next thing you have to do is to get the center as a center this crease line here is a center so you decide the length of the dress so on this side of the on this side you can go ahead and depending on how you how you want this so can go ahead and do this form of a V so Oh, this is it. This, look, uh, this looks like um, a V kind of um, from this part. You create this V shape to the to the center line. I just don't want the chop to be too much on the fabric. That's why I'm doing this. Then you come to the side from the center.
so this is it take this like this this will be a, more like a, a, a rounded um, hemline not a circled ring a circled um, hemline rather so it's not the v-shape so you make sure that um whatever it is you have here it's aligning to what you have here so the best way to do this So this is it so you make sure that this line and this line is aligning so this one is so this is it i'm going to cut this out cut this out so this is the the hemline. This is the side, like this. And this is it. So this is what it looks like. I hope this is clear enough. It looks like. So the next thing now it's um to get the pockets. So for the pocket, like I said before, two and a half. From here to here you open two and half you measure two and half and open open it to um seven inches so this is it it has been opened the next thing is to take your pocket there are diff different ways of fixing this fixing the pocket so this is one method of fixing it so you take this like this you place it like this this is it place it like this then you sew half an inch to that seven inches um, opening so this is it seven inches opening so half on this side that's so half and um the outcome would look like this so this is the outcome this is what it will look like So that being said, we'll go ahead and fix this one. Then I'll overlock the hem of this um, dress. Overlock it, then I'll use my hemming gum when it's time for me to do the hem. I'll use my hemming gum first of all to secure the amount of um, um, the amount of hem allowance that I need before I stitch it. So when I get to that part, I'll bring it and I'll show us what it looks like or how it's done. Join the side of the the back of the this the, the dress to the front. So this is it. So the waist is um thirty three inches. For the facing, I've uh, not fixed the facing at the upper part because I'm going to use it to turn. When I fix the zip, I'm going to use it to, to um, cover the zip, the edge of the zip. So that's why I still left this. Now the next thing to do after closing this side, we're going to close this. Actually, open it because of overlocking. We're going to close this. Then you take your zip part. You make sure the This is it. You pin. You get the center also. You pin. Make sure everything is aligning. Then you join it. Then after that, we'll fix the zip. For the sleeve, I'll be using this basic sleeve. And I've gone ahead to trace out the um, seam allowance or mark the seam allowance. So what I did basically, because the fabric is not enough, I just placed my pattern on it. So you can see we have join in here. So um, I'll mark one, one inch for the same allowance here. Then I'll come to this part. I'll mark um, whatever it is that I have left here. So if you want, if you have enough fabric, you can determine how full you want the side because it's going to have elastic at the edge, at this, at the edge in between. 
or the lower part of the arm. So what I have here is four three quarter. You check what you have here also about that. So you connect that one inch to the four three quarter. Do the same to this side. I've gone ahead to cut out the sleeve. So this is what it looks like. I've also gone ahead to overlock and fold. Fold it. I'm going to fold it. I folded it and I'm going to stitch this. Then after stitching this, I'm going to put this elastic. This is where I'm putting the elastic. So it will cover at least cover this join that I have here. And I'm, cl I'm closing the side using the allowance I left. So I'll go and do that. I've fixed the sleeve. So this is what it looks like. The next thing is to go iron hem this neckline and give it a good press. Guys, this is it. This is what it looks like and um, if you need to you need to draw this you need to draw it pull it to give that effect so this is what it looks like thank you so much for watching please like share subscribe and also comment if there is any question please feel free to leave it in the comment section Bye, see you in the next video.